good morning everyone so for the next 5 to 10 minutes so my presentation will be on role of lipids in infant nutrition so i will be covering on the composition of lipids in human milk or the breast milk and also i will be explaining you the role of all these lipid components each lipid component in uh, breast milk or human milk and how a dietary habit in a mother can affect a lipid composition in uh, human milk and also i will be briefly explaining you or giving you a perspective or research pers perspective in uh, infant nutrition without further ado let's get into the details breastfeeding is the best choice for feeding infants fats contribute the major portion that is 45 to 55% of the energy contained in human milk Lipids are the dominant provider of energy contributing 90% of the energy retained by infants during first 6 months. Lipids are also an efficient source of energy deposition. The energy cost to synthesize and store fat from glucose is 25% whereas it is only 1 to 4% when lipid is a substrate. Although there are they are uh, although their precise functionalities are not yet fully understood the various lipids provided by human milk are known to modulate gastrointestinal function lipoprotein metabolism membrane composition and function and signaling pathways thereby markedly affecting infant growth and development and overall health mammary alveolar cells produce milk fat globules containing a core predominantly consisting of triacylglycerol as it is shown in the figure, uh, table here Which is 98 to 99 percent is triacylglycerol. Small amounts of monoacylglycerols, diacylglycerols, non-esterified fatty acids surrounded by milk fat membrane with the different phospholipids, esterified cholesterol, glycosylated polypeptides, filaments, mucins, lactaderin, and other components can be found in human milk. Now the properties of milk triglycerides depend on their fatty acid composition. Mature human milk typically contains approximately 34% to 48% saturated fatty acids, mainly palmitic acid. Approximately 31 to 43% of monounsaturated fatty acids are found in human milk. Approximately 12 to 26% of omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids. and 0.8 to 3.6% of omega 3 family of polyunsaturated fatty acids can be found in infant formula the fatty acid composition varies according to the lipid sources used for example palm oil has a high palmitic acid content with no short or medium chain fatty acids whereas these fatty acids are present in high proportion in coconut oil use of different lipid sources therefore translate into differences in contents and proportion of short and medium chain fatty acids most preterm and some term infant formula contain medium chain triglycerides derived from coconut oil now the triglyceride structure is also important for uh, a long uh, for the absorption of lipids in the infants in intestine so long chain fatty acid which is attached at a uh, second carbon that is carbon 2 of glycerol in triacylglycerol is uh, more efficiently digested and absorbed note that human milk is rich in saturated fatty acid that is palmitic acid of approximately 70% of this is esterified at uh, carbon 2 of triacylglycerol making it more efficiently digested and absorbed compared to only less than 20% of Uh, of which is found at C2 position in triglycerides in infant formula that is why compared to uh, human milk infant formula digestion and absorption is uh, inefficient now the fatty acid composition of human milk uh, lipids is markedly modified by maternal dietary habits for example the proportion of the essential fatty acids that is linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid in breast milk depends on the mother's diet maternal dietary intake of marine foods is extremely variable and explains the wide range of docosa hexaenoic acid content in breast milk human and animals uh, animal milks always uh, provide a uh, preformed endogenous arachidonic acid because of this the arachidonic acid content in human milk is quite stable around the world despite marked variations in dietary intakes and lifestyles 
Now, the uh, importance of saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids not only provide energy but also have structural and metabolic functions. Saturated fatty acids range in size from 6 to 24 carbons, but the most common in infant diets have 12 carbon, 14 carbon, 16 carbon, and 18 carbon chain lengths. Most of the saturated 16 carbon fatty acid, palmitic acid, in breast milk is located in the carbon 2 of triacylglycerol. In the palm oil based infant formula, palmitic acid is located at C1 or C3 position of triacylglycerol, making this, uh, making this infant formula as uh, impairing this as an absorption of calcium and fat and resulting in insoluble calcium soaps, which negatively influence early bone accretion. Some other features of saturated fatty acids might have a physiological or nutritional relevance such as the presence of palmitic acid in pulmonary surfactant. Individual saturated fatty acids are often shown uh, to exhibit specific properties such as bactericidal effects for capric acid, immunomodulation for arachidic acid and behenic acid and protein acylation for meristic or, or palmitic acids. These properties may deserve further explanation, explorations in humans and infants. Now, monounsaturated fatty acids are the second most common fatty acids in breast milk and infant formula. The dominant monounsaturated fatty acids are oleic acid and palmitolic acid. In spite of this abundance, their potential functionalities have not been explored in infants and are of you know, unknown nutritional importance. One another monounsaturated fatty acid is nervonic acid. Although found only at extremely low levels in breast milk and in infant formula in the body, the 24 carbon nervonic acid is important for myelination and play a role in brain growth and development. Indeed, nervonic acid is the major extremely long chain fatty acid in sphingomyelin with a dramatic accretion around the time of delivery. It has been observed that nervonic acid is sevenfold higher in breast milk of mothers of premature infants than in mature milk of mothers of term infants. Coming with the polyunsaturated fatty acids. Essential fatty acids like linoleic acid and lino alpha linolenic acid are converted to arachidonic acid and docosahexaenoic acid by the help of desaturases and elongases in our body. Breast milk contents in linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid vary depending on the maternal intakes of these essential fatty acids and cannot be used as a basis for supply recommendation in infant formulas. Current guidelines for the levels of linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid in infant formula aim at avoidance of an extremely high linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid ratio. The estimated linoleic acid requirement of infants to prevent deficiency is approximately 1% of energy needs and that for alpha linolenic acid is approximately 0.5% 0 uh, 0 of energy. Considering a certain margin of safety, the amounts of linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid mandated by the European Food Safety Agency for infant formula are 4.5% 4 4 of energy for linoleic acid and 0.5% of energy for alpha linolenic acid. In recent times, there has been an increase increasing interest in the effect of essential fatty acids, particularly long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids on cognitive brain development. Of, of the human brain's dry weight, 60% is composed of lipids of which 20% are docosahexaenoic acid and arachidonic acid. These represent the two core fatty acids found in grey matter. Essential fatty acids play a central functional role in the brain. Uh, they are not only the basic components of neuronal uh, membranes, but they modulate membrane fluidity and volume and thereby influence receptor and enzyme activities in addition to, the, uh, uh, to affecting ion channels. Essential fatty acids are also precursor for active uh, mediators that play a key role in inflammation and immune reaction. They promote neuronal and dendritic spine growth and synaptic membrane synthesis and hence influence signal processing and neural transmission. In addition, essential fatty acids regulate gene expression in the brain. Therefore, the existing literature strongly suggests that essential fatty acids are critical for brain development and function. 
A number of epidemiological studies have shown a positive association between maternal fish intake during pregnancy and cognitive development in children. Higher maternal fish intake was beneficial for cognitive development uh, even after adjusting for breastfeeding and many socio-demographic uh, factors. Because adequate docosahexaenoic acid status is important for infant development, it has been recommended to include docosahexaenoic acid in infant formula at levels approximately 0.1% to 0.18% of energy. Higher docosahexaenoic acid intakes have been recently recommended for preterm infants who have higher requirement for uh, regarding neuro development. Now coming with the cholesterol. The interaction between docosahexaenoic acid and cholesterol might modulate membrane rafts and functions of channels, enzymes and receptors associated with membranes but clinical consequences in infants are not known. Breastfed infants show a threefold lower functional uh, fraction, uh, fractional synthesis rate of cholesterol than infants fed formula containing extremely low levels of cholesterol, suggesting that dietary cholesterol intake in addition to the other possible factors may modulate cholesterol metabolism in infancy. A greater difference was observed for exclusively rather than partial breastfed, uh, breastfeeding suggesting that exclusive breastfeeding of 30% of infants could reduce population prevalence of cardiovascular disease by 5%. Now coming to the complex lipids. Mammalian milk contain phospholipids like plasmalogens, glycerophospholipids, sphingophospholipids including ceramides and ganglocytes. Complex lipids play important roles in signal transmission and cell recognition. Recently, the results of a randomized trial of sphingomyelin-enriched formula were reported showing a positive association with the neurobehavioral development of low, weight, uh, low birth weight infants. Ganglocytes make up 10% of the total lipid mass in the brain and are highly concentrated in the cerebral cortex of the brain's gray matter. It has therefore been proposed that complex lipids should be included by enriching infant formula using dairy sources. In conclusion, dietary lipids have a wide range of biological actions beyond the provision of energy and are essential for infants' growth, development and health. Lipids in breast milk are extremely complex and diverse and their physiological roles are not yet fully understood. Evidence continues to accumulate that the quality of dietary lipids provided to infants has a marked impact on health outcomes. There is thus some opportunity for improving the quality of the lipid intake of breastfed infants by modifying the dietary supply of women during pregnancy and lactation, either in the general population or following targeted approaches. Changes in the lipid composition of infant formula should take advantage of the increasing knowledge and must be based on the solid scientific evidence, exploring biological effects and evaluating clinical outcomes. When elaborating infant formula, the ultimate challenge is to approximate the biochemical and clinical outcomes of breastfeeding rather than simply mimicking the composition of human milk. Significant improvements have been achieved in the last few years not only in the research methodologies and understanding of biology but also towards optimal uses of raw materials in the manufacture of the fat blends used in formula. This combined progress provides opportunities to explore and evaluate op optimized lipid nutrition in infants with the aim of improving health in both the short and long terms. Although we are gaining knowledge about lipid nutritional requirements and functions, much research is required. There are many areas of primary research but the most relevant aim to improve both understanding of underlying mechanisms and the short and long term clinical outcomes of infant nutrition. The latter should be addressed via adequately powered clinical trials conducted with high methodological quality and standard to achieve reliable conclusions. Here are some of my references. I hope I, am, I was able to cover some of the important aspects of infant nutrition, especially in relation to the lipid composition of infant nutrition. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, best wishes from my side. Thank you again.